I found trouble and sorrow. That's the end of the third verse. Trouble and sorrow didn't find me. I, I want you to understand something about this text, something I believe the Lord showed me. I, I believe it, that he showed me. And that is that we walk into a lot of our chaos of our own devising. Yep. There's a lot of chaos that finds us that is not our own devising. That's life, right? Yeah. People around us get sick and hurt and die. It's not God trying to teach you a lesson. It's chaos at your doorstep, right? It's chaos. That's the way life is. It's bad stuff happens and, and it finds you. Some of it you find. I found trouble and sorrow. It's straight up your fault, man. It's straight up your fault. You did it. Welcome, welcome to hell. Now, you don't have to live there. What did David say? If I make my bed in hell, you're with, you're with me. What's that mean? If I get in the middle of chaos, guess who's in the middle of it? Now, that guy had a right to say it. Dude sleeps with Bathsheba, kills her husband, lies about it for a good year. He's not who you would vote in to be your next pastor. His reputation is he's a giant killer. His actions are he's a marriage killer. His reputation and his lifestyle didn't quite match up right there. But he said, if I make my bed in hell, and I have, you're here. You lead me beside still waters. You lead me into green grass. You lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Did you hear that one? You lead me here, you lead me here, you lead me here. But even if I were to just take off on my own and walk into the valley of the shadow of death, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies. David wrote that. You know why? Because he knew that it had been a time or two in his life, yea, though he walked into the valley of the shadow of death. And his, his father is so inclined with daddy's ear to David's voice and your father is so inclined with his ear to your voice that even if you've walked into chaos, God walks into chaos with you. He does not say, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you will immediately pull me out. He says, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you walk through it with me. And your rod and your staff comfort me, they don't beat me. You can mitigate my chaos, chaos I walked into. I did it. It found me. I found trouble. I found it. I found trouble and sorrow. I walked in and you walked in with me. Your ear is so inclined to me. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, I implore you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yes, our God is merciful. Look at that fifth verse again. Gracious is the Lord. Our God is merciful. Grace is God's unmerited favor. It is God being good to a people that don't deserve goodness. And mercy is God withholding that which we know we deserve because we earned it. Grace I get because I didn't earn it. Mercy should be mine. Mercy is me not getting what I deserve. And the author of Psalms 116 says, I found sorrow and trouble and I cried out, please save me. And your grace was real and your mercy is real. And how many of you have been there where his grace gave you what you didn't deserve and his mercy kept you from a few things you should have had happen to you. Amen. And that just straight up makes us love God. That's as simple as I can say it. That just straight up makes us love God. We go, God, I love you. You've been so good to me when I didn't deserve it. That was grace. And you gave me a few, you, you helped me out of a few jams that should have killed me. And that's your mercy. And I love you for being gracious. And I love you for being merciful. Now, what, what we're talking about tonight is practical. This is experiential Christianity to me. See, there's theoretical Christianity and then there's experiential Christianity. I, I dig some theoretical Christianity. I, I love sitting around a table and talking theory. All right? I, I dig what verse you've seen and what you feel like it's saying and maybe we can make a new connection and maybe we can deconstruct and slam a sledgehammer into one and build a new one. That's awesome. But I also realize there's experiential Christianity. There's what works on the street. There's what works in real life. There's the real life practical stuff. The stuff you got to get down and dirty and live out. And what I found is, is theory is 
fun and experience isn't fun. Anybody else? I mean, theory is fun. We can talk about all kinds of stuff. I mean, because we don't know. Man, I don't, we don't know if we're right. What's an angel look like? And do you think those are relevant in our lives? And what about feathers appearing in the carpet right out of nowhere? And you go, well, we ought to have a discussion on that. Write a book. Well, praise God. You can go for that. And then there's the experience of, hey, my kid's on drugs, and my marriage is falling apart, and I'm going bankrupt, and I've been tithing. So, what's up with that? See, that's not theory anymore. All your theory don't mean jack to that guy. Right? Because that guy has got chaos at his doorstep, and maybe a bunch of it they walked into. Maybe he's a terrible dad. Maybe he's an awful parent. He's making horrible decisions. Maybe he brought half of it on himself. Maybe that's the kind of truth he needs. I think it might be the kind of truth Jesus might have said to somebody. I don't know, but i got to live this by experience, not just theory. It's not just saying, oh, this is the thing. This is what we ought to do. It's walking this thing out and putting this thing into work and watching what it does in our kids. And you don't get to experiment because if you mess them up, you don't get to trade them in. Right? I mean, you don't just get to try out theories on them. You want to get this thing right. You got to walk this out. You got to live it. Thank God for grace. Because I made enough moronic decisions on my own just trying to figure stuff out. I need God's grace. Give me some wisdom I don't have. And I need God's mercy to keep me from a couple of the repercussions. And some of them I live out anyhow, because that's just the way life is. And I walk them out. But I love God because every time Paul White cries out, there he is. Sometimes I don't like his response. I'm going to be honest with you. This is, this is real stuff, right? I mean, we're living experience. I can be real theoretical and tell you I, I think it's holy and I, and I love, no matter what he says, I lovest thou, God, and whatever thou sayest, I... <laughs> I go along with thee with both thumbs up. <laughs> but that's bull. I don't feel that way. Sometimes God speaks something and I say, I don't like that at all. That's not, that doesn't make me happy. I thought the whole point of this thing was for me to be happy. <laughs> One of the largest disservices we've been done in, in the world, in the Western world, is that we've been convinced that life is about being happy. Okay? We've, been, we've been lied to. And we, we pass that lie on to our children. So what we did was we told them, look, I don't care what you become as long as you're happy. That's a terrible advice. Because when you stick a needle in your arm and shoot heroin into your veins, for that brief moment, you are happy. What you've done is taught them to devalue the most important thing in life, which is Meaning. And value the thing in life that only defines your current state of emotion. Happiness. Your current state of emotion. It is only currently your state of emotion. It is not your permanent state of emotion. It's why the Bible doesn't talk a whole lot about happiness, but talks a lot about joy. It doesn't say the happiness of the Lord is my strength, but it says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Paul doesn't say the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and happiness. But righteousness, peace, and joy. Why? Because joy is something I have because of who I am. Happiness is something I have because of what I have. And who I'm with. And what job I've acquired and what car I'm driving. And when that stuff goes bad, I need more happiness. And we're just setting people up to go chase stuff that makes them happy. Instead of stuff that gives them meaning. So don't go get a job that makes you happy. Go get a job in which you get to express your meaning for being on the planet. And happiness won't be an issue. Because happiness will hunt down the man who lives with meaning. Child of God. This walk of grace is not about finding happiness. This walk of grace is about discovering the meaning of who you are in Christ. And living that out. And some days you're not going to be happy. Because that's the human experience. Amen. And that doesn't mean grace isn't working in you. It just means you're human. Yeah. Yeah. 
And that's okay. 